What we have here is an order database. In this main form, there are clients, and in the subform are the orders the clients have placed in the past, and we can add new ones. Notice that there is a total column, and here is the total of all orders, and the total of today's order. That would be, in this case, these orders are today's orders, and that total is exactly $124.75. Uh, in this kind of subform, we also can add new orders. We get a drop-down list, and let's say that this um, company ordered Escargo 5, and everything will automatically update when I click on a new list, then the today's order went up to 191. How do we create such forms and subforms with drop-down boxes? Let's um, start from scratch. I'm going to delete these three items. The relationships between these tables are very simple. We have only a customer's table, an order's table, a product's table, and an order details table. One customer has many orders. One order can have many products, and one product can be in many orders. So there is a many-to-many -many relationship. So we need a details table, a junction table. The junction table has the order ID from the orders table as a foreign key, and the product ID from the products table as a foreign key, and the quantity and the discount belong there. So how can we make a main form and a subform? The main form is going to hold this information, and the subform is going to do something on these three tables together. The main form creates from the form wizard the main form. Let's based on the table customers. Let's say we want all the fields. Sometimes you want to delete some. Next column, next, and let's call it form main customers. The form is very simple. We have record after record. I'm going back to the first record. Now we need a subform here. Before you do so, you have to make a query first, then a form based on that query, and put that form as a subform in the main form. So we need a query now, query design. Based on orders, order details, products, and close. In order to make the subform work and have it hooked up to the right customer, we need the customer ID on the many side. Don't take the customer ID from the customer's table. So we need this customer ID. Then we need the order ID on the many side. Not this one, but that one. And the product ID from there. And then we probably need to know what is the product's name, what is the quantity, the discount, and the order date. So this is what we have gotten so far. Let's make a total column. So I'm going to zoom in here. I will do that with a bigger font so you can see it better. We need a formula in there. Let's call this field total. When the field name is done, colon space and you want the field quantity, you can put that inside brackets, but you don't have to if there is no space inside the field name. And then we need unit price. So this is what we got so far. Here are the totals. Save the query. Let's call it query sub orders it for the sub form okay that is step one now we need to create a form based on that query form wizard based on the query sub orders let's move in everything except the customer id order id and the product id 
we don't want to see those. Next, make sure that you make that a data sheet that is more compact than column or tabular. It's the compactest form of a subform. Next, let's call it FRM suborders and finish. That's what the thing looks like. All we have to do now is put that form in the main form. So we open the main form in design view. We make the form higher, wider, and let's put here the subform that we just created. Design, subform, subreport, in this case a subform. Click where you want it and dra draw it. Use an existing form that we just created, the form suborders. Then we want to define the connections between main form and subform. The customer idea in the main form should be the same as the customer idea in the subform. Next, give it a name and the thing is done. So when I go to the next client, we get different orders. That is important to realize. So what we have to do now is when we want to add new records, we want to make sure that we get a drop down box here. And we don't have that yet. We're going to change that into a combo box, change to a combo box. But we have to do much more. We go to the properties of that combo box. And we are going to say to that box, the <coughs> data comes from a row source. The row source has to be built based on a query. Click on the three dots from the products table. We want the product ID and the product name. And close that query. Save the changes. We need more on the properties. We also have to make sure that the bound column is one, that is the ID number. And we are going to the data. The control source is not the product name, but the product ID, because the bound column is an ID number. So we want the product ID to be the control source. And then we have to make sure that we have two columns shown, column count two, but the column width, this first one, you don't want to see. So zero inch and one inch. And this is what we got so far. You see, now how do we change the order of columns? The best thing to do is set the product name to zero. The quantity, tab indexed one, unit price two, order date three, total four. That solves the problem that we could not see that part. So this is what we got so far. I'm going to save all of this. And now we want to make sure that we can add new records here. So by default, I would like in the order date to have today's date. So we are going to say to the order date, the default value should be set to today's date equals date open close parentheses. So from now on, Each time I add a new record, let's say tofu, we automatically get today's date. The unit price is whatever the table told us. The quantity, we can regulate that with a number. And now 46 is the total. When I click in another record, that is final. So now we have to make sure that the previous dates cannot be changed. How do we do that? We are going to say to the form properties of the subform, 
that we don't allow edit no so i can never change anymore anything in old records it doesn't help where i click now finally let's make sure that we can get here subtotals so we go back to the subform and in the subform we create a footer we put in there design an a b box and that's going to be the total box let's go to the properties the control source is going to be equals sum open parentheses the total field and make that currency and name that box txt total then we are going to also make a box that calculates the total for today's sales that formula is a little more complicated it is going to be equals to sum correct open parentheses but now i need the if function i i f if the order date order date field equals today's date date open close parentheses if that is the case then sum the total field otherwise don't do anything close your if statement and close your sum statement make that currency and let's call it txt today's total don't forget to save all you just did what is the problem that these two subtotals do not show up in a data sheet so we have to put in the main form another box that refers to those two boxes so we create a new a b box and the control source this time is linked hooked up to that box so we click on the three dots the ellipsis in the form main customers the form sub orders we want the txt total box that's what we want to refer to make it currency and we do something similar for the other box an ab box a text box control source link it to that box in the sub form of four main sub orders and that was called text today's total okay it make it currency see what we got we got the total is 49.37 and for today's orders that is these four guys december 5th 13 that is 341 together so now we have a form that does all that work beautifully you probably want to know much more than what i just showed you i developed for you a cd-rom your access to the world you can find it at genesispc.com and not only does it discuss how to make forms with subforms but it has a huge array of items that you could ever dream of in access including maintaining databases macros database development and basic programming you can find it at genesispc.com